All right, the objections overruled, uh, Mr. Guy. Mr. Dunn, your testimony this afternoon or this morning is that when you pulled up, there was music playing in the red SUV. Yeah, there may have been music playing, but it wasn't that heavy thumping um, um, noise that bothered me. Okay, isn't it true you said the detective still on the topic of music? No, it wasn't until Rhonda got out of the car and she had been gone for a little bit. That the thumping started, correct. Okay, but they were asking that, you about music. <clears throat> and that agrees with um, my letter as well, by the way. I, I'm sorry, you know, music is music where there's lyrics and um, instruments. My complaint was the heavy bass that was reverberating the body panels. Okay, well, let, let, me, let me use your words, because you're saying the music is playing when you pulled up, right? Right. Okay, do you remember this question and this answer in your interview? Okay, just kind of walk me through kind of what happened at that point. This is you. Well, I'm embarrassed to say, but Rhonda got out. She's in the store, and there's like an SUV next to us. And then the music starts. Sure, and in that case, I should, probably should have said the heavy bass thumping. But you said music starts. Correct. And, and, and what did you say to her? You didn't say, I hate that thug music. What did you say? I didn't say this, but if I had said anything, I would have characterized it as rap crap. Not thug music. That's not a term I'm familiar with. Okay, but rap crap. You don't like that either, do you? I don't like the thumping noise. Especially when it's loud, right? Yeah, it hurts my ears. All right. Um, you testified this afternoon, or this morning, that you had three or four rum and cokes, right? Yeah, they were small. I mean, it would probably equal one or two normal sized drinks. Okay, probably so Ron, one or two ounces of. Rhonda Rauer got that right. The number of cokes she had, rum and coke. She she did. Okay. Do you remember telling the police when they asked you if you had had anything to drink at the wedding? You said I had a toast and a rum and coke. Right. I said I had one. Right. But now today you're saying you had three or four. Well, in my um, defense, one ounce of alcohol is one drink to me, and. Right. Um, I guess I was wrong. I probably had two ounces of alcohol. And your testimony today is that Jordan Davis said to you, this shit is going down tonight. No, this shit's going down now. This shit's going down now, okay? Uh, you, didn't, uh, you didn't tell that to the sheriff's office, did you? I don't think I did. You know, I had two hours of sleep. This whole um, incident was very um, new. Um, but after, um, if you can call it a night's sleep in the jail, I did have an interview with my attorney. Well, um, let me ask you. And all this, you know, instead of being interrogated, I was actually interviewed, and this extra detail came out. Interrogated? Did, um, did they threaten you? Did the police threaten you? Well, you know, it was combative, so that, that wasn't an interview, sir. It was an interrogation. Did they, did they promise you anything? Like to get you to answer a certain way? Nope. Did they threaten you physically? Nope. Did they threaten you verbally? They were combative. Did they tell you, you don't have to make a statement, right? Sure. And you did. But, but they were argumentative. They weren't um, trying to withdraw information from me. They were... And did they tell you, if at any point you want to stop talking, you can stop talking? In the beginning, they did. Well, did they, did they ever take that back? Did they ever tell you you couldn't stop? No, but they weren't stressing that over and over. Well, you, you did sign a rights form saying you understood your rights, right? Correct. I, did, did you I, had, noth I had nothing to hide. Um, you know, if I had f further recollections after getting more than two hours of sleep, uh, I think that's um, normal. Isn't it true that uh, Detective Musser said to you, is there anything else you can tell us that you want to tell us about what happened? I believe he did. And you said, nope, that's Honor, it. If I can just object and approach for one minute, Your Honor. Sure. Sarah, do you have the rights form?
Mr. Guy. Thank you, Judge. Mr. Dunn, the bottom line is, in your interview with the police, you never said that Jordan Davis said this shit's going down tonight, or now. Correct, I did not. Right. I think I even uh, mischaracterized to the police the whole, I'm going to kill you, because um, I was like, they said, you know, it was coming through at um, bits and pieces. Okay, and you, but you did give the police an account, right? Yeah, as best I could, under the circumstances, two hours of sleep. And you told them graphic details about what happened, right? Somewhat. And you told them that Jordan Davis was the one threatening you, right? Yes, he was. You didn't know his name, but you said that was the guy, the guy who threatened you. It was in the rear passenger seat. All right. But today you said there were actually two guys in well, the back seat. There were Let two guys in the back. Two guys in the back seat who had menacing looks on their faces, right? Yes, that's correct. Okay, you didn't tell the sheriff's office that, did you? I didn't think it was relevant. You didn't? Well, not at the time. Okay, well, you knew you were being questioned about a murder, right? Sure. And so, you just wanted the, to leave that out? The guy in the rear passenger was the one doing the threatening. The other guy was just looking mean. Let's, um, let's talk about what this, uh, what you saw was. As you sit here today, what is, what is it now? It was a shotgun. It's a shotgun. Okay, what did you tell the sheriff's office it was? I told him it was a shotgun. Didn't you tell him it was a, either a barrel or a stick? Yes, I did. And this is after the police telling me there is no weapon recovered at the car or the scene, and me believing the police were competent and able to search the whole area. So by process of elimination, um, you know, it's like some kind of industrial object, a pipe, something that looked very much like a barrel. But at the time, his actions and his threats, there was no, no doubt in my mind that that was a weapon, that that was a firearm. But, but uh, the doubt came in when the police started telling me that they didn't recover anything in the car or the scene. But as we've learned, they didn't check the scene. And, um, but you said at that time it, it could have been a stick? Yeah, and again, two hours of sleep, I, I misspoke. I mean, a stick doesn't really do justice to it. Um, picture anything that looks like a barrel, something with a metal patina, right around the same um, thickness of, of a shotgun barrel. And isn't it true that the detective said at some point, is it possible it was your imagination? And you said yes. No, I did not. I started to say that anything is possible, but not likely. And it certainly wasn't my imagination that he came out of the car. You, uh, you don't like that music, do you? It's uh, not my style, but you know, when I was a kid, my folks didn't like rock and roll. And they were, they were listening to it loud, right? Their body, the body panels on their vehicle were vibrating. The side windows of my car, they were vibrating. The rear window, the rear mirror in my car was vibrating. My eardrum was vibrating. It wasn't loud. It was obnoxious. And you didn't like it? It was painful. I asked for a common courtesy. Hey, could you turn that down, please? If they would have said... F you, we're not doing it. I, I mean, that's basically what they did. They turned it off, turned it back on. I, I wasn't going to ask them again. I was done. I, I asked them for a common courtesy. They gave it. I said, thank you. And that was the end of it. Even when they turned it back on, that was the end of it. It was Jordan Davis who kept escalating this to the point where he, I had no choice but to defend myself. It was life or death. Jordan Davis was, he was getting on you, right? I mean, he was, he was cussing, right? You know, I heard snips of what he was saying, but it, w uh, it wasn't until I heard I should fucking kill that motherfucker that I started really paying attention to and what he was saying. Your window's up, right? 
Yes, and I hear him screaming this. Okay, I mean, it, the window's up, and the, and the music's so loud, the bass is so loud that your rearview mirror's rattling. Well, re remember, they shut it off once, and then they turned it on, and it's not quite as loud, but, you know, it's still annoying, but we're not at the eardrum vibrating level now. But he's, but you're telling this jury that with your window closed and that music round, you could hear Jordan Davis? Certainly, you because the, the bass isn't, there's no mid-range, there's no... There's no instruments or voices. It's just low bass. And I, he is so excited and angry. I hear him over that with my window up. And that, that, didn't, that didn't upset you at all? You, you thought, oh, that's okay. I was concerned, and that's why I put my window down and asked him, are you talking about me? I, I was ready to um, try to de-escalate the, the situation because I could see it was spiraling out of hand. At, at every time this young man's speaking, it's louder and louder and more violent and more violent each, at each step. Didn't you tell the police that you couldn't make out everything that was being said? That's correct. Yeah, the something something cracker and the something something white boy. I mean, I couldn't hear it all, but I, you know, I could tell he was irate. And so, um, so you, you rolled down your window. I did. And, and you asked him... Are you talking about me? I said, are you talking about me? Okay. D did you have a question about that? I did, because, you know, sometimes um, maybe you think it's about you and it's not. But I, I also didn't, you know, I didn't want to assume. But at the same time, it was an opener to try to say, hey, you know, I did say um, thanks. I appreciated it. You know, again, trying to de-escalate. There was nobody else in the car, was there? There were two others in the car. No, no, no. In your car. No. Okay, so you didn't think they were talking to somebody else in the car? Well, they weren't talking to me, sir. They were talking about somebody, and that's why I asked, are you talking about me? Did, did you think they were talking about Rhonda? I didn't know who they were talking about. I assumed they were talking about me, but I didn't want to just, um, you know, start off with any old thing. That's what I thought of to as an opener to de-escalate. Okay, so you're... You're telling this jury that this guy who now is escalating, I think was your word, and screaming that he's going to kill you, right? Correct. So you thought the best course of action is to roll down your window and say, excuse me, are you talking about me? Correct. That's, that's what you thought the best idea was? I, yes. You know, um, nothing for nothing, but, you know, they could have been singing. I didn't want to assume that they were talking about killing me if they were singing. Mm -hmm. The truth is, sir, when you rolled down your window and said, are you talking about me, you were challenging this 17-year-old boy. I don't believe so. I put the inflection on me. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, he, he took your challenge, didn't he? And said, yeah, I am talking to you. He didn't say that. He said, yeah, I'm going to fucking kill you. Well, I guess you got your answer, didn't you? You were being disrespected by a mouthy teenager, weren't you? No, I was being threatened. Threatening to kill somebody isn't a disrespect. That is just crazy. The windows in the um, SUV are tinted, correct? The front ones where I couldn't tell you about the rear. I never saw them up. Okay, and I think you told the jury that um, you couldn't even see the guy sitting next to you, right? I couldn't see the front re uh, passenger, no. You know who that is now? Yes. Tevin Thompson? Yes. Okay, you knew, you knew there was a guy in the back seat, right? Yeah, there were two in the back seat. Right. And you knew there was um, a driver, right? Yeah, I assumed the driver was in the store, but I did see uh, a young man walk by, um, you know, when, when I went to ask if they were talking about me. Okay, well, that's three, right? Well, that would have been the fourth. Well, you, you couldn't see Kevin Thompson, could you? I could see that somebody was there, and obviously, um, when I asked to turn the music down, the music was off, and, you know, you... Is somebody there by the controls? So now you could see somebody in that. I, I saw like a shape. I couldn't see um, his face or 
really tell um, where he was facing front or back, but you could see like a shape. All right, well, they didn't have any lights on in their car, did they? I don't believe so. Okay, and it was nighttime? Yeah, right? it was dusk, evening. And, and you've seen the pictures of the car now, right? Yes. The windows are tinted, all of them. Well, the, the, rear, the rear windows, um, I haven't seen up. I assume they're tinted, but I haven't seen them. Dark tint, right? That's what I understand, the darkest legal tent. All right, and you're telling this jury that um, through the dark tent at night, you were able to see Jordan Davis bend forward. Oh, no, no, the, 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 you misunderstand. The rear windows were down. Okay, so you can Both see... Both sides. Okay. So, uh, so I can see light coming through. And all I really saw of him is his shoulders leaning forward because, you know, the door, his, his door is higher than mine. So you're saying that Leland Brunson's window was down too? Yes. And you could see through the door that he was bending forward? No, I could see over the door, through the window, that his shoulders leaned forward. Didn't you uh, write in your letter that um, he bends forward and picks up something with both hands? Right, because of the shoulders. If he so had done this or that, that would, to me, indicate one hand, but both shoulders. Okay. So you could, you uh, are just assuming now through the door that he used both hands. Yeah, I'm extrapolating. Further adding Judge, to I'm the... I'm going to object to this as being non-responsive. Mr. Dunn, you just need to wait for another question, all right? Yes, sir. And um, this guy who's enraged, right? Yeah, I mean, he's just yelling, amping up. Screaming? You know, yelling. Um, yes. Threatening to kill you? Yes. Now he's got a, a shotgun, right? Yep. And he opens his door, right? Right. Now, remember, he, he unlatched it. It's only open a little bit when he hollers, you're dead, bitch. Okay, but you, you said he got out. He did after that. Okay, so it's kind of like it, it's just like I said. It keeps getting worse. He did open the door. Yep, he popped it open okay. a little, and then he opened it all the way. Well, you know, most of the way. And um, can you show the jury on states one twenty five where the the ding is in your door I don't where think, this madman opened the door? I don't think it hit me. So the the guy who's enraged who's next to you. Is, uh, opens the door and doesn't hit your car? Apparently not. But if you look at the rear of uh, Durango, it's by the wheel well, and their door isn't... It isn't like a sedan where, they're, um, where they would hit you. It's a little high. And tell the jury how close the two cars were. They were pretty close. How close? I couldn't tell you feet-wise, but I know uh, the Durango is parked close to the white line separating our two spots. Well, well, you put that fact in your letter too, didn't you? I did. Okay, and what you said in your letter was, there was a red SUV to the left that was parked too close to the right of its space for me to exit my car. Correct. So you couldn't open your door, right? I could, but it wouldn't have been comfortable. Okay, but he can open his door in a rage and not hit your car. Um, obviously, uh, because that's what happened. So, yes. And because the cars were so close... If he would have gotten out of the car, there would have been a door in between you two, right? There was. So he would have had to close the door, step back, close the door, and then come forward, right? I guess, or fire over the door. I couldn't tell you what his strategy was. And so it was at that point that you grabbed your gun, right? Um, when he exited his car and hollered, this shit's going down now, um, I had... Um, already been afraid for my life, but now the fear was imminent, and I, I was just, I was done. I mean, this is, this is serious, and I took him at his word. I mean, he's been telling me he's going to kill me, he's told me I'm dead, and now he's telling me it's going to happen now. I'm not going to forfeit my life to somebody. And he's outside the car? Yes. Okay, and it's at that point 
that you reach over for the glove box, right? Yes. Okay, so you have to reach for the glove box, right? Yes. You have to open the glove box. Yes. You have to grab your gun. Yes. You have to pull the gun out. Yes. You have to take the holster off. Yes. You have to slide, pull the slide back, right? Right, you have to cock it. Then you have to turn, right? Yes. And point the gun, right? Yes. You've had to put your middle finger through the trigger guard, right? Because you're... Right, I demonstrated all this. I did it in about two seconds. Okay, and in all that time, the guy who was outside the car threatened to kill you, he didn't shoot you? Well, uh, he did not, thankfully. I mean, we, did, we didn't miss that, right? I mean, he didn't shoot you, right? He didn't shoot at you. You know, um, if you listen to the video, there is some kind of pop. I don't know if that was uh, him or somebody else, but... Hold on. Are you telling this jury that Jordan Davis discharged a firearm I, at you? I have no knowledge of what he did or didn't do. I'm, well, you, you know what a shotgun sounds like, right? Sure, sure. It's not quiet, is it? No, no, it's a boom. It's a, a distinctive boom. Okay, so we would have heard a shotgun go you off. You would have, and the pop I'm talking to, it sounds a little weak. I'm not sure what the heck that is. But it's not a shotgun going off. No. So you were not shot at? Well, I don't know. I'm just telling you what I heard on the um, audio. You guys will hear. So, so the guy that got out, wanting to kill you, telling him he was going to kill you, Watched you do all those things and didn't shoot you. Your Honor asked an answer to the question. Sustained. Did you say, um, did you say on direct that you thought he might just be out there to beat you? Didn't you say beat me? I wasn't really sure what his intentions were. You know, he's saying kill. He didn't say I'm going to beat you up. But... You know, he, he's enraged. I have no idea what his intentions are. And quite frankly, I don't want to find out. And how tall, how tall are you? I'm six feet four. And how much did you weigh? At the time, 250 plus. Okay, Jordan, Jordan Davis was measured at 5'11", 145 with all his clothes on. Does that, does that sound about right? I couldn't tell you. So you were worried that this, this guy who's 100 pounds less than you? I tell you, anybody with a gun is deadly. But you were worried I, he was going to beat you up, right? Well, you know, if he has, um, I'm sitting in a car and he comes at me with a, a metal object. I mean, but at the time, his threats and actions left no doubt in my mind that that was a firearm. It looked like a firearm. He was treating it like a firearm. He wasn't saying, I'm going to beat you up. He was saying, I'm going to kill you. So You're you dead. You said to him, you're not going to kill me. You son of a bitch. That's right. Right? And you're telling this jury you didn't, you didn't raise your voice when you did that? I said that more of a, uh, to myself. I mean, I'm inside the car getting my, um, my pistol. Um, so I'm not saying it to him. I'm saying this is a thing that I'm saying out loud. Okay. Did you say it out loud? Yes, I did. And you don't think this guy heard you? I hope he did. You hope he did? Sure. That's, he that's part of uh, any... Self-defense is you want to yell and kind of like stun your attacker. Right, and when you yelled, you're not going to kill me, you son of a bitch, he still didn't fire? Uh, thankfully, no. Um, in your letter, you, you say, I mean, the way you described it, it happened all very fast, right? You said just a couple of seconds? Right. From, from the time where he first popped his door and said, um, you're dead, bitch. Right. And then where he opened the door and started getting out and said, this shit's going down now. I mean, it, it you know, maybe a couple heartbeats in between saying I'm dead and then getting out. And in your letter, didn't you say that you were paralyzed with fear? I, I was when, um, when I asked him, uh, are you talking about me? And he said, yeah, I'm going to effing kill you. Um, had, um, you know, had he decided to shoot me through the car, uh, that would have been the time to do it. But and I was paralyzed, and, and I, I wouldn't have been able to react. But somehow the paralysis just left you. Well, when he opened this door and came after me and announced that this shit was going down now, yes, it did. And that's what you put in your letter, that something happened inside of me, my paralysis left me.
That's accurate. Again, this letter wasn't for you all. This was for my family and friends. I had no idea that um, you would have access to my mail, but I'm happy that you read this so you can understand what I went through. Because and the jury will have this. I'm this happy that you do. Right? It's, it's as accurate as I can get. This was written in June, and um, it pretty much covers the nightmare that I have. And you shot from inside your car, right? Yes, I did. But, but this guy didn't, right? He had to get out of the car to shoot. He had a long gun, so I, I guess maybe that's why. I couldn't tell you about his tactics. I can just tell you what I did. And you, um, when you fired, you, you didn't fire a warning shot, right? Of course not. I mean, you didn't fire up in the air. Of course not. You didn't fire down at the ground. Why would I? This guy has made his intentions clear. So you, you put it right on the door. I, I have every right of self-defense, and I took it. You, they asked, the question was, you aimed right at the door. Yes, sir. I pointed at the direction of my attacker. And pulled the trigger, right? Yes, sir. So you hit your target? You know, I, I was uh, pointing towards my attacker, I hit the door, and um, um, unfortunately he was right there behind the door. My intention was to stop the attack, uh, not necessarily end a life, it just worked out that way. With two hands, right? Two hands on the gun? Yes, sir. Like, remember Sean Atkins, the, the, the inmate who testified? Mm -hmm. When he did that demonstration like this, that was accurate, right? That was um, accurate when the um, SUV was driving away, and I opened my door, and I um, like took a little hop out and did, did that. How many, how many hands did you use the first time then? Two. I was across my body. And um, the car started backing out, didn't it? It did, and as I mentioned earlier, I had tunnel vision. Um, the red wall of the doors going by didn't register right away. And, um, you know, that's why you have um, three additional rounds in the front passenger. It didn't register what was going on immediately. Okay, but when you say you had tunnel vision, you're not saying you didn't realize you were continuing to pull the trigger. I, I really didn't. I mean, this whole... Um, how many and this and that. I, I thought I shot three. Rhonda Salt told me she heard four, and then we see there were six. I mean, it's just the perceptions are um, off. Well, actually, there were seven, right? You missed one. Okay. So are you telling the story you blacked out during that period? I didn't black out, but, you know, the um, adrenaline and everything that's happening kind of affects your perception. And, um, and the fear. And then they, they were out of your view, right? Well, they went behind me. Right. So you got out of your car. I opened my door. Are you saying you didn't get out of your car? I think I um, maybe took a kneel or a step away. Okay. Um, you want to look at page two of your letter for me? When you describe getting out of your car. And I can show you where it is. It's right there in the middle. You want me to point it to you? I'm finding it. The sentence begins it says I ran a few feet behind my car. I think I um, ran a few feet from my car. Okay, but you, you wrote sure, but in your statement, the SUV pulled forward, and I got out of my car and ran a few feet behind my car. Right, and I'm telling you I probably should have written from my car. Okay, so, so what was it? Because just a minute ago you said you did a kneel down. Yeah, like a few feet from my car. I'm sorry? I kneeled down, I cut, you know, like got out of my driver's seat, took a step or two, and then kneeled down. Okay, and, and where was the red SUV then? It wasn't behind your car then? No, it was driving forward, but this is where they had um, a line from me to the front door. So not only was I saving my life, I was saving Rhonda's from blind fire. Right, you, you knew Rhonda was standing outside behind you? I was afraid that that's uh, where she would be. She, you were wrong, though. She wasn't, was she? Well, you know what? About two seconds later, she was. So my fear was found, well-founded. Well, she didn't come out until you stopped firing, right? Um, I couldn't tell you exactly when she came out, but 
the time it took me to walk those two steps and get in the car she was coming out. So, um, so tell me again, or tell us again why you fired. I mean, they're driving away now, right? At, right, at that point, they're driving away. Right. The, why I fired, no... there's at least one firearm and four shooters in a car that just threatened to kill me. Four shooters threatened to kill you? Is that what there, you just said? I said there's at least one firearm and at least four shooters in a car that just threatened to kill me. Okay, how, how many of the other shooters had guns? I don't know, but there's at least one gun, and any one of them could have used it. Oh, okay. So they were going to pass it around? I have no idea, sir. I'm just telling you what I was thinking. Okay, but, but the fact is, nobody did fire back, did they? No. And, and nobody stuck a gun out the window at you, did they? Yes, they did. No, no, no. When they're pulling away? No, 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 they didn't. And you said to the police, um, they asked you about those shots, didn't they? Yes. Yeah, and, and your words to the police was, I can't justify those la that last volley. Other than to say, and then I got cut off. Did, did you not tell the police, I, I, have, I can't justify that last volley? Other than to say, and then I got cut off. So yes, I did say what you said, but I also continued the, se the sentence with other than to justify. And um, I guess you're telling this jury that you thought that they might shoot back at you, right? That was my fear, my okay. concern. So your thought was, I'll get out of my car and get into the open. Well, it was to um, try to get out of the line of fire. Okay, but wouldn't that put you in the line of fire? If you're Not necessarily, because if you get behind them, they can't shoot behind them as easily as they can beside them. And if you um, look at the rear bullet holes, they were from behind it. Oh, definitely they were. Yeah, not and not beside you, I think you said at one point you were shooting to, to keep their heads down? Right, that's the um, blind fire. Um, keep, keep their heads down so they would not shoot back. Okay, well, what's, what's blind fire? That's where they just shoot over blindly without aiming. Okay, so you were worried that these guys were just going to kind of do one of these maybe? Yes, yes. So you said um, you're going to shoot to keep your heads down, right? Well, I'm shooting low, but um, my, my gun climbed. Well, I mean, if you were shooting to keep your heads down, why'd you put two in the rear tail line? Well, you know, if you um, shoot even missing and hitting the ground, it's noise, and maybe they would duck, and, you know... You're, you're asking me why I sh didn't shoot to kill. Um, I was shooting to keep their heads down, not to kill. Into the taillight. Correct. And then you, um, you put your, go your gun back in the glove box, right? I did. Even though these, um, I think you called them gangsters, even though these gangsters were, were still out there, right? Right, and my gun was ready to fire at that time. It was fully loaded. Well, had five rounds, but there was one in the barrel. But, I mean, you saw them pull off and, and go. You thought they were on Southside Boulevard, right? I did. And so they weren't a threat to you anymore, right? Correct. So you were safe, right? Well, I didn't know if they were coming back or if there were other, um, if they had friends in the parking lot. Did, did you, I, I was petrified. Did you see any other friends in the parking lot? No, but I didn't look either. Okay, I mean, Steve Smith, he was in the parking lot, right? Yeah, and I didn't see him. Did you think he was one of their friends? No, I didn't even see him. Did you see, think Sean Atkins was one of their friends? I didn't see these people. I had, um, you know, the tunnel vision going. So you were imagining that there might be another car? Well, you know, you, you hear enough news stories and you read about these things, they go through your mind. You thought everybody in the car was a thug or a gangster, right? After the way they behaved, yes, I did. Their thoughts. The way, their... The way they behaved? Well, the, the one man in particular, but his uh, neighbor, um, seemed to have been in agreement right there with him. Okay, but the guy in the front seat actually turned the music down. Right? You're, you're right. He was the reasonable one. Right, and the driver, he didn't threaten you in any way, did he? You, you're right. He did not. 
So, the threat is gone, and you decided the best course of action was to leave, right? Yes, sir. Even though there were lots of people around, correct? Yes, sir. And there was lighting around, right? Yes, sir. And the front door to the store couldn't have been more than, what, 12 feet away from your car? Correct. And so you thought that the best thing to do is, is to flee. Or leave. To leave the area. And you did, um, you did have your cell phone with you. Pardon? You did have your cell phone with you. Yeah, my cell phone was uh, set on Google Maps, uh, directions to the hotel, but yes, I did. Okay, but it doesn't take long to get that off, does it? Don't you just push the button? No. Nope. And um, you are familiar with 911, are you not? Yes, I am. Three digits, right? Yes, sir. You didn't call the police, did you? No, never did. You I didn't call panicked. the police at the store, right? I, I didn't call the police at all until the following morning. That didn't, um, that didn't go through your head? Like, like maybe I just shot at somebody because they you, pointed a gun at me, I should call the police? You know, you're right. It sounds crazy, and I couldn't tell you what I was thinking when all this happened. I can just tell you that I didn't do it. And if you had told me that if this happened to you, you wouldn't call the police, I wouldn't believe you. But that's what happened. But, I mean, you were upset when you left this, the store, right? I was in a panic. Right. And then you got back to the hotel. Yes, right? that's, that's where we went, like our sanctuary. Right. And you, um, you didn't call the police at the hotel, did you? Nope, same, same logic and, or lack of reasoning. It's just what we did. Mr. Dunn, the reason you left the gas station is because you knew you had shot into a car of four unarmed teenagers. That's incorrect. So you go back to the hotel and you go inside. Yes. Did you take your phone with you? I believe I did. Did you call the police from the safety of your hotel room? No, as I said, I didn't call the police until the following morning for reasons I couldn't explain why. And um, I think you said earlier, and I, I asked you to pause, that, that you, were, you spent the time looking down, waiting for the red SUV to come back. Is that what yeah, you it was like a waking nightmare. Hold on. Did, did you sit in that hotel and look down at and the club room the, yeah. and wait for the red SUV? Right? Yeah, I mean, I'm looking down at traffic and just my waking nightmare is that they would come by. Yeah. I mean, the SUV had pulled off, right? Yeah, I didn't know where they went. I, hadn't, I didn't see it again. You didn't follow the SUV. No. They didn't follow you. I had no knowledge. I mean, it was... So you just I, thought, I certainly hoped that they hadn't. So you just thought that somehow... They were going to find out where you parked at your hotel. I know it's not rational. I admit that. That's why I said it was my waking nightmare. And because you thought this car full of gangsters was going to come back, you decided to park in the front of the hotel, right? I don't recall where I parked. But did Ms. Rower's testimony refresh your recollection? She said y'all parked in the front. If that's where she said, then we may have parked there, but... I didn't consciously park there. And you put, um, you left your gun in the glove box, right? Yeah, that was um, Rhonda's idea because I was going to take it and she is like, you know, um, just kind of weirded out about everything. So I um, took the time to safe it and uh, put it in the glove box. Right, because you knew nobody was behind you. Well, I I didn't know anything. And like I said, the the fear while we were up in the club room. I agree it was irrational, but this is what we were experiencing. And um, when you were at the hotel room, you didn't, uh, you didn't call 911? I didn't call the police until the following morning. You called the pizza man, right? Yeah, I, I, um, I think I mentioned that. I wanted to get something for Rhonda to eat to, to calm her upset stomach. I'm going to come back to that. Um, you told the police that uh, one of the reasons you left the station was you were in a strange town. Right. In a strange area. Right. Even though you lived off that very same road for two years. 
Yeah, like 15 years ago, none of it was familiar. After, after a two-year period, it wasn't familiar to you? Not really. I went from that uh, apartment to the NAS, and uh, I knew from the apartment to the highway. So, and, I mean, when you lived here for two years, you didn't, you didn't go anywhere else? Not really. I had a motorcycle, and it wasn't convenient to drive it around. You didn't ever take your motorcycle for a ride? No, I went from the apartment to work. Isn't that why people have motorcycles, to go for rides? It is, but that was my only form of transportation at the time. Well, I guess you didn't have much of a social life then, because you were just going, I guess, to, from your brother-in-law's house or your brother's house to, to work and straight back? Yep. No, no and, then, and then on the weekends, home. Yeah, you didn't go anywhere else out in Jacksonville? Not, not this way. We were down by NAS. Okay, Miss um, Miss Rower said you'd been to that station before. Did she get that right? Um, I very well could have uh, for for fuel. The reason you didn't call the police is because you knew you had committed a crime. No, sir. Did you know that um, that somebody had written down your tag number? No. Is that why you parked in the front of the hotel? Because you didn't think anybody knew who did it? The thought had uh, not, nothing like that came into play. So um, you're staring down at the SUV or looking for the SUV without your gun, right? Correct. And you take uh, Charlie. You take Charlie outside. Backwards. We did Charlie first. Right. But you took him outside, right? Yes. Even though the gangsters might be around? My waking nightmare, yes. Without your gun? Correct. I, I fully s say that it was an um, irrational fear, but it was a fear. And you, you weren't expecting Charlie to protect you, right? Of course not. You, um... Poured yourself a drink? Yeah, to calm, um, calm my nerves, I poured one for Rhonda, too. Stiff drink? Yes. Alcoholic drink? With rum, rum and coke. Did that, that, did that help you be stoic, I guess? No, it didn't help calm me down even a little bit. We were And then you, um, you turned on a movie? I don't recall. I know we were watching TV out in the um, common room, whatever was on. Right. So you you weren't uh, afraid that the um, gangsters were going to come up uh, into the common area. You needed a key card to get in the elevator, so no. So you were in the common area? For a while, yeah. Watching TV? Yeah, whatever was on. You still haven't called the police, right? Your Honor, ask and answer. Sustain. And then, um, then at one o'clock, your phone. Twenty minute break, please.